Hello gang, this is Alex Abian coming at you. And uh, this is gonna be a very short introduction video um, to the section uh, on, the web, on this website uh, as it relates to the applying the Sandler sales system to our ATM presentation uh, flip chart system. And uh, for those of you who may be familiar with uh, Dave Sandler, he has a, uh, a wildly popular sales system that's been around since I don't know, the mid 60s and 70s. Uh, he's a tremendous teacher. And the MP3s that uh, you have access to on this website go into uh, very specific sections uh, of his sales, Sandler sales submarine. Now, what we've done in, uh, in developing the ATM flip chart presentation is we've actually used um, about five of the seven, there's some steps in the classic sales system, uh, being that we have a, uh, a lead program that we uh, sell on. Uh, you have two steps in the seven-step system for a sales system. Here, we so we've kind of um, taken those two steps out and consolidated into a five-step system um, that we're using and uh, and that the ATM presentation is based on. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm not going to go into how to do the Sandler sales system on the ATM. What I'm really going to do is show you where uh, what slides apply to each of these five steps. So when you listen to the MP3s, when it comes to bond and rapport, pain, upfront contract fulfillment, and the post sale post sale step, you know which slide. Uh, applies to these sections. And then when you listen to these MP3s, um, you can use that thought process mentality in um, that section of the ATM, both the final expense and the mortgage protection. Okay, so I'm gonna really, this is more like pointing you to which slides apply so that you know um, how to think about each slide and, and what part of these MP3s uh, uh, are fit into that uh, ATM presentation, okay? So let's talk about the sales submarine, okay? Really, when you look at the ATM sales process, it really follows the, the sales submarine. Now, why do we call it a sales submarine? Well, primarily because you go from one step to the next step, and you don't really move on to the next step until you closed the first step. And so here on the sales summary, and it starts here with the bond and rapport, okay? And this is when you create that trust with that client so they believe you, okay? And those are two elements of a righteous sale. If you've seen my other videos on the ATM, you know, the five elements of a sale are, does a client um, trust you and believe you? Um, do they need it, want it, and can they afford it? Okay, so those are the five elements of a righteous sale. Do they trust you and believe you? Do they need it, want it, and can they afford it? Okay, so if you didn't close the sale, it's probably one or more of those five reasons. And so the five steps of the Sandler Sales Submarine is designed to fulfill those five elements of a righteous sale. The bond and rapport designed to create um, trust so that the client believes you, okay? And it gives you the credibility to ask the questions in the pain process, okay? After you got done with the bond and rapport, then it allows you then to move to the pain, finding out what problem are you trying to solve. If the client has no pain for you to take care of, then you're not gonna make a sale, you know, because it doesn't make sense to make a sale to someone who doesn't need what it is you're selling. So our job is to find and develop the pain so that they have a problem to solve, okay? And that's the need and want. If you can take care of the need and want in the pain process, then you fulfilled um, three of the five steps. Um, well, the need and want, which is uh, two of the five steps, the trust and believe is the first two. So then the last one is, can they afford it? And so this is where you go into, once you find their problem, 
And then the upfront contract is really designed to tell the client, this is what's going to happen next. Okay, this is what we're going to do to take care of your pain. And we're going to lay out the process for them. Okay, and then they're going to agree to that process. Okay, we're not going to take anything short of, yes, that sounds good to me. And then finally, once we got the upfront contract, then the fulfillment. In other words, the fulfillment, fulfillment of the contract. We are going to lay out, find out more about the client. So we're going to help us develop the proposal. We're going to lay out three options. They're going to pick one, and then we write it up, and it's done. And so we're going to fulfill our part of the contract, and the client's going to fulfill their part of the contract, which is signing their name. We're picking the option that will best meet their needs and budget. They're going to sign their name to the contract and um, pay the first month premium to bind the insurance company um, for the temporary insurance agreement or the conditional receipt. And then finally, the last part, once you fulfill the fulfillment, or once you get through the fulfillment compartment, then comes the post-sell. And the post-sell is locking down your sale, making sure that the client really wants it, okay, and they're willing to pay for it and they can afford it. Okay, so you don't get a charge back because the client cancels their policy before 13 months, or actually before nine months, okay? And so the, the idea of the submarine, why is it a submarine? Well, the way the submarine works is each compartment, you know, they're airtight compartments. That's how a submarine works. So if one compartment um, takes a hit, you can close that compartment off um, because so that the other compartments won't flood and the submarine is still viable. So if it sustains damage, you can just close off the compartment so water doesn't enter the other co compartments. Well, that's the whole idea in the Sandler sales system is that once you've closed the compartment of Bonner Rapport and you did a real good job there, then it allows you to move to the pain compartment. Okay, and once you do a good job in the pain compartment, you shut that door and you move on to the upfront contract. Once you do a good job there, you shut that door and you go to the fulfillment. Once you do a good job there, close the client, shut that door, then allows you to move the post sale to make sure that the client is really going to follow through and keep this policy on the books. Okay, so that in a nutshell is the Sandler Sales Submarine as it applies to the ATM. Okay, now let's go to the next slide and kind of break this down for you as far as what slides constitute in this case, the bond and rapport section, the first section. And remember, the objective of this compartment is to create trust with the client, credibility as well, so that they believe you. Because if they don't trust you, then they won't believe you, and you have zero credibility for them to want to uh, continue doing business with you. But once you create trust with the client and that credibility, then it will allow them to believe what you're saying, that you really are interested in helping them, okay, take care of their families. And the first four um, slides in the ATM will cover the bond and rapport, um, telling them who we are, National, Agents, uh, uh, National Alliance of Agents working together to provide mortgage, final expense, and retirement protection to our clients. Then you transition to the About Me slide. So you tell a little bit about you, which gives you a platform to ask about them. So when you, like for example here, I talk about being born on a naval base in Morocco, okay, and I grew up in, in different states following my dad around in the Navy. And so that allows us to ask the client, so did you grow up around here? Are you native to Florida or wherever you happen to be? And then, so each of these questions really are designed to create um, bond and rapport with the client by finding out more about them. So not are you, sh are you sharing about you, but you're also finding out about them. So it's a kind of a dialogue, okay? And this kind of keeps you on track with that. And then the about me here, where you show the pictures of your family and your Ohio license is designed to create, again, further bond and rapport and credibility that you're a licensed life insurance agent. Okay. Then finally, the companies I represent, again, to design to create bond and rapport plus credibility in that we represent big name companies that have been around since the early 1900s or 1800s. They're billion, worth billions of dollars. So here we have an opportunity to create additional credibility. So 
between these four slides, you should be able to create enough bond rapport where you can create that trust and believability, okay? So now, once you get through these four slides, you should be able to close the bond and rapport compartment and then move on to the pain. This is what the pain slide looks like for the mortgage protection sale. It's the what if slide. And this is where you spend time finding out why the client sent this form in, this mortgage protection lead in. What was your concern when you sent this form in? Take me back to when you were reading this and putting your personal information on this form. What were you thinking? What were the, and then again, the next question, if you died last week, what would you want me to do for your, your family this week? And you give them the two choices. Sorry, your spouse wanted to think about it and I, I didn't commit to the benefits, so I have nothing for you. Or would you like me to say, here's a tax-free check for 250,000 to eliminate your mortgage? Okay, so which one would you rather have me do? So these questions are designed to find the pain. If, I, if there's any um, section in this whole sales process that agents um, are sorely deficient, it's asking enough questions to drill down to find the emotional pain that the client is trying to solve. And so if there's any slide you need to focus on, I believe it's this one. You know, and then the second um, order of importance is the bond and rapport. In fact, bond and rapport and pain really kind of go together because if you don't have bond and rapport, then it's hard to ask true pain questions to elicit that emotional reason why they need this, okay? So they really kind of go hand in hand, but you can't have one without the other. So you'll do a terrible job in the pain process if you did a terrible job in the bond and rapport. But if you did a great job in bond and rapport, then the pain questions are gonna be easy, easier to ask. And the client will be more willing to share their emotional reasons on why they need this, okay? Um, the final expense pain, slide looks more like this. Why is this important? Most people request information for one of four reasons. You did list out the reasons. Joan, Mary, why did you send this in? Which one of these four reasons apply to you? Okay. And so this is where you get them talking about their problem and getting them more to that emotional reason why they need this. Okay. So if you've done a really good enough job here, the client has an emotional reason. They want to make sure that they t take care of their problem with a life insurance program that you can um, write them up with, okay? So once you close the bond and rapport, you close the pain compartment, now you tell them this is what we're gonna do next. And you can see on this slide, we ha I have both of them up here, which are very, they're very similar. They say basically the same thing. Joan, Mary, this is what's gonna happen next, okay? And you're basically gonna tell them, we are going to fill out an application form to see if you qualify. We're gonna um, send it in with the first month premium and we're gonna do everything that you qualified. Does that sound good to you, Joan Mary? Okay, so there's no room after this slide for them to think about it because if you're gonna come up against a think about it objection, it better be right here, okay? Now, if you did a great job on the pain process, you're not gonna get a think about it here, okay? But this is designed to get rid of any unsaid objections by telling them this is what's going to happen. Okay, and, and to define further what an upfront contract is in the Sandler world, it's really um, in Joe and Mary, um, I see why you sent this in. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help you take care of that so that never happens to you, Mary, where you have to move out of the house, move into an apartment. Okay, that's why I'm here. Okay, this is what's going to happen next. You tell them what's gonna happen next. And the contract is, I'm gonna take care of their problem. That's my end of the contract. I'm gonna find them something that they can afford that will fit their needs and their budget. And their part of the contract is signing the form, paying their first month premium check and committing to taking care of their families. That's the contract. And this is what we're gonna take care of right here. Once you get this done, you've gotten rid of any objection then everything's smooth sailing from here. You close this compartment and you move on to the fulfillment step, okay? Now this is the fulfillment part of the mortgage protection and you'll notice um, the explanation of what mortgage protection is, is actually before the upfront contract slide. 
but in general, the fulfillment is explaining what the product will do for them to take care of their problem, okay? And, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out more about them, and then we're gonna, from that information regarding their health, it's gonna lead us to the right product that they'll fit into from a field underwriting health perspective, and then we'll be able to develop um, three options for them to choose from um, that will start the conversation as, to, as far as what they can afford. Okay, so all this stuff is more of the, the technical field underwriting, coming up with three options, they pick one, and then the fulfillment happens. The fulfillment of the expectation that I'm gonna show them something that will solve their pain, that they can afford, they can keep for the long haul, okay? and um, take care of this compartment of fulfillment, okay? So once you get the fulfillment compartment closed, then we move on to the post-sell, oh, sorry. This is the final expense version of the fulfillment, okay? And you're talking about what is final expense, all right? This is how we're gonna solve their problem. This is how final expense will solve their problem. We're gonna find out a little bit more about them to see what they can um, fit into as far as product line and then we're gonna give them three quotes. So this is the fulfillment um, pages for the final expense. Once we get the fulfillment done, we move on to the last compartment. And, and there are some other slides in between here. You know, once you get the close of the life insurance, then we get the referrals through the ERS and the RX card. We find and explore opportunities um, for annuities. Okay, and that's sort of a pain process in and of itself. Do they have a pain when it comes to their safe money? Are they not, are they losing money? Are they only gaining a 1% interest rate on a CD and paying taxes on that gain? Okay, so we're gonna um, explore their pain when it comes to their retirement um, programs. But that, you know, we'll, we'll fulfill that later um, on the second uh, BAMFAM, the second appointment. Okay, so there's those slides that come before this. But then the final questions, this is the post-sell slide. And this is common between both the final expense and the mortgage protection ATM. And these are the questions, do you feel good about taking care of your family today for $92 per month or $175 per month or $25 per month, whatever it is. We're trying to explore that they're comfortable making this payment for the long haul. Again, we further drill it down, anything you can think of that would prevent you from keeping this payment going, et cetera. So this is really the last slide in, well, there's one more slide and that's a recruiting slide. Okay, and this is where we um, solicit them to see if they might be interested or they know someone that might be interested in helping us out um, take care of these families that, that we don't have enough agents to take care of on our lead program. But this post sale is the last part of the sale um, for the insurance, uh, uh, final expense insurance or mortgage protection insurance for the client. Once you get it buttoned up here, then everything's done. And get fired up, man, because you've got a, a sale that's gonna be a righteous sale because it's gonna fulfill the five points of a righteous sale. They believe, they, um, they trust you, they believe you, they need it, they want it, and they can afford it, okay? So that's it. So as you listen to the MP3s in each of the sections on this website, remember the Sandler sales system is designed as more of a generic system that cuts across all industries. It doesn't matter what kind of selling. So this, the Sandler sales system um, applies to industrial sales, software sales, home improvement, window replacement sales people, insurance people like us. I mean, it cuts across the spectrum of all sales um, industries. So th it's going to be more generic, okay, but I want you to see how our ATM program fits into the Sandler sub, and then you can take the MP3s and listen to it in the context of each of these slides, um, which is each of the compartments in the sales submarine. All right, gang? So that is it, over and out. Um, enjoy these MP3s. They're very short, you know, little small three to five minute snippets of um, explaining uh, some of these ideas. And um, I'm sure that once you master um, the concepts here and put it into practice, and this most important thing is putting what you learn into practice immediately, you're gonna start seeing your sales go through the roof. All right, gang? So that is it, Alex Abian out. Good selling, take care everybody, bye.